What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. This video we're continuing building out our homepage view refactor. So this is where we're currently at. In this video we're going to build out this widget here which is going to tell us the amount that we've saved versus the amount that we need. So in our example here we have a total saved of 625. So that would be the value that would go in this bar. It would say 625. And since our total budget that we're projected to save is 1,000, the difference between 1,000 and 625 would be 375, and that will go in the needed column over here. Uh, you can see that's kind of exactly what's going on here. 50 is over here, and then 300, which is the difference of what we need still, is over here. So this is kind. Of, this looks pretty cool, I think, and it's not super hard to do, but there are a few cool new things that you'll see, uh, mainly being the fractionally sized box, which we can use here. So let's jump right in and get started building this. All right, so back in our project here, let's create a new Dart file in our home widgets and call this saved versus needed. And just like all the other widgets that we've been building on this home page, uh, it has this similar structure. We need material and we need the trip object. And now we can go ahead and call this from our home view after this padding block, which is how we're displaying these two widgets here. We are going to just go ahead and add that saved versus needed. And the context will be there and we just need to use widget.trip and pass that through. Going into the saved versus needed, we aren't returning anything, so that's why we're getting an error right now. Let's return a container here. And for the child here, we're going to give it a row. And you can see right here, we're gonna have one row, which encapsulates all of this, that has two columns. And then one column in the row will be these three elements, the saved, the bar, and then the amount, and then the other will be the exact same thing. So use a row here, and then there will be two columns in this row, which will be the children of it. So that is kind of our basic structure there. Um, nothing is yet going, I mean, you could save it. Nothing's really going to display. Uh, we do need a semicolon there. If we save it now, nothing's displayed, but our error goes away because we're returning something now. So let's build out this first column, which will be the left side column. We want first to have this say saved at the top. So that is a simple one. We can just use text for that. And in terms of textile, we just are going to set the color to white. The next element is actually going to be this bar here. And this is where we can use a fractionally sized box, which we're, with, with that, we can give it a height. So we can give it the height that we want it to be out of a percentage of of a whole height. So let's let's kind of make that and then see what it looks like. So we'll use this fractionally sized box and then we can give it a height factor. And the height factor can be any number between zero and one. So let's give this a 0 0.5 height factor. And then this will take a child, which will be in this case, in this case will be a container and we're gonna set the width of that to be 50. And now this container is simply just this bar here. So the width is 50, and then the color is going to be white. So if we save that, nothing quite is happening. There are a few issues with this. We need to wrap our fractionally sized box in a container. And then within that container, we can give it an alignment and give it the bottom center alignment. So the issue that we're, so the reason this isn't really showing anything now is because we're using this fractionally sized box, but we don't really have any explicit height set for uh, this row or this column. And that is kind of what what is causing this main issue. Uh, we need the parent basically of this to have some sort of height that it can use to then give you a a fractional amount of. So on this container, we're just going to set set a height value here and use the media query um, of the height. And then we'll, we'll make this height 30% of the screen size. So 
we can use 0 0.03 there. Just setting that height there is still not quite enough. We need to actually wrap this fractionally sized box in an expanded widget. Let's actually wrap the container of it in an expanded widget. And that will help actually give it some size there. So you can see we do actually, it's very hard to see, but there is actually a white box here. Let's build out this container a little bit more so that it is on a uh, background. And then, and then I think things will make a bit more sense. The expanded, again, we needed the expanded so that this fractionally sized box can give, can have a height. And we needed both the expanded and the height here because it needs to expand within some sort of height which is the 30% of the height. So this container here, we can also use the, similar to how we use this decoration on our other cards, we can copy that over and drop that decoration in here. The thing we will change is we want blue, we want this to be the blue accent first, and then the second color we're going to use is the indigo. And we're gonna go from the top left to the bottom right, just how the other one was. Uh, if you save that, you'll see the card is now is now showing up there, and there is that bar that we that we created, and it is 50% of the height of this whole of this whole card here. Let's go back to the home view and update a few things. Firstly, let's wrap this in some padding. We're definitely going to want 15 padding on the left and the right so that we get these so that it lines up with everything else. But we're also just gonna do 15 padding everywhere so that we have a little bit more space in between there. And that looks pretty good. You can see when you scroll to the bottom, it doesn't actually let us scroll all the way down. We can simply add a container to the bottom of this with a height of 40. And this will do really nothing other than allow us to scroll up more so that our button doesn't cover this block. Go back to the saved versus needed, and we need to get this lined up a little bit better. So back in our row here, we're going to add both the cross axis alignment, and we're gonna set that equal to the end. And we're also gonna set our main axis alignment, and we're going to set that equal to space around. And with that, you can see now the bar is in the center, kind of how we would expect it to be. This saved here, we can wrap in a, we can wrap in some padding and just give it some top and bottom padding of 15. Then basically copy this whole thing and place it below the expanded as well. This is where we're going to actually say how much we have saved. So this is going to be a variable, or this is going to be a, yeah, this is going to be a variable of how much has been saved, which is going to be the same number that is up here. So we could just use trip.saved, but we are going to use that value on the spent value. So let's define actually some variables that we can use to populate these fields down here. Firstly, we're going to have the saved amount, and that's simply going to equal the trip.saved. Now, if the trip.saved is null, then we want that to equal zero. And then we're going to call floor on this because in the database, this is stored as a double, but we always want this to just be the number in dollars. The next thing we can define is the total budget, and that's going to equal the trips budget. And again, we'll call floor on that just to get the, the main budget as a single number, and then we're gonna multiply that by the total number of days in the trip. So we have that method, which is get total trip days. And again, if you look, if we look at our trip model real quick, that get that get total trip days is simply just getting the difference between our start date and our end date, and then and that's it, and returning that. So this will get us that total budget, which essentially, which is exactly the same number that we're using right here. So it would be 1000 for this example. And then the last variable we need is the needed amount. So this is just going to be the difference between the total budget and the amount that we've saved. 
and we'll just call floor on that as well to be safe. So now we have these three variables. The saved variable we want to position down below here. So we can use we can escape a dollar sign first and then use the dollar sign saved. And you can see when you rerun that, it now has that 625 as we would expect. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and make it so that this bar here is not just 50%, but it is showing a a more accurate representation of how much has been saved. So right now, since this is a, this is kind of easy math, we have a total budget of a thousand, and we've saved 625. So this should be at uh, essentially 62%. This should be filled up 62% of the way. So this height factor here is what we're going to be modifying. You can see if we set this to 0.2, it would be 20%. So, and if we set this equal to one, it would be 100% and fill up the entire entire space here. So all we need to do here is set this equal to the saved amount divided by the total budget. So that is essentially taking this 625 and dividing it by 1,000. And if you do that, you'll see you'll get that decimal value of 0.625. So that is that is good. But now imagine that this saved amount was more than the total budget. So imagine that we saved, you know, imagine we saved like $1,200. Now our value is 1.2. So if you were to if you were to enter 1.2 in here, you're going to see that it is going to expand higher than we want it to. So imagine that that got up to like 2.0. This is definitely not something we want to happen, but it's something that could easily happen because you could just continue to save more than what your budgeted amount was. So we need to add a quick check in here. And all we're going to be checking for here is if the saved amount is greater than the total budget. So that means you saved more than your total budget. And if that is the case, then we're going to set your value here equal to one. So this is essentially making our our value, our max value one. And then if it if your saved amount is less than the total budget, then we're just going to do that division like we were already and show you that percentage there. So that looks good. And this this right here is this is right here is just a shorthand if statement if you haven't seen this before. Uh, this is our if conditional and then the question mark is basically saying if this statement here is true then do this thing and then this is like the or and then this is like the else so if this statement was not true it will do this thing over here. Uh, but that is good and this left side is now actually completely set up. We can now copy these three elements and modify them for the spent side. So first thing, instead of saved, we're going to change this to needed. And then instead of showing the saved variable here, we're going to use the needed variable. And our height factor is going to be slightly different here. Uh, without doing any checks, let's just first use needed divided by the total budget. So you can see here, we're getting a, an accurate value for our needed. The total saved is 625, and that looks good. Our total budget is 1,000, so our total needed should be about 300, our total needed should be 375, not 925. And if you scroll up and look at these variables, it's actually using the wrong method here. So we're using the get days until trip instead of the total trip days. Change this to get total trip days and resave that and you'll see now we're getting that 375. Now we do need to add a check on the needed as well, kind of similar to the saved one. The same concept is what will cause the error. So right now it says we need 375. So imagine we save $500 here and now we just actually get an error. This is partially because we now saved more than we needed, right? So at this point, we don't we don't want to divide our needed by the total budget because our needed is actually zero or it's actually a negative number. 
What we're going to check for here is we're going to check if needed is less than or equal to zero. Then we're going to want to use zero. And then if not, we're going to use that division. Now, the number needed down here is also negative 25. I think we're going to keep that because it kind of shows you that you oversaved. But if you wanted to, you could do essentially the same exact logic where you're checking if it's less than or equal to zero. And if it is, you'll 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 display zero. And if not, you'll just display that needed variable. Uh, and then at that point, it'll just show zero for needed. I'm not sure which I like better. I guess we could leave it like this because you don't need any more. It's not that you need a negative 25 or negative 125. That doesn't quite make sense. but. Yeah, that is going to be it for these cards. You can see as you change some numbers around, so if we do 500 spent, this changes back and it tells us it tells us what we had before, that we have 625 saved and we still need 375. I think this is a pretty cool way to visualize this information. Let me know what you think down below. Like the video if you liked the video and subscribe to see the next video where we're going to continue out building the final few cards of this home page view.